Hello everyone, my name is Diego. Hi, I'm Conchita. And today we're going to talk about healthcare. Um, there's a lot of media news that has been going around um, with that subject, and so we thought it would be a good opportunity to share our stories and kind of our perspectives there. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about my experience a little bit. So the reason I came to the United States is because I have a disability and my parents thought I would get better services. So I was undocumented and I lived in California. At the time, there was a program that allowed children to have um, healthcare services, but it was very poor services. And so I always say like, I'm kind of traumatized from <laughs> the experience that I had with healthcare because if I had a cold or something, I need to go to the doctor, I would have to take the whole day off. It couldn't just be an hour because it was like three hours waiting in the waiting room, you know, one hour trying to find an interpreter, another hour, oh, you know, okay. being stuck, like taken from place to place. Um, there's like a hundred people there with people. So it, it's a very traumatizing experience. So I had healthcare, but I did not have good healthcare. How much of that experience was like you owning it and your mom sort of navigating it? Did you feel like it was balance or? Um, I think my mom tried to navigate it. The thing is my mom doesn't speak English. Oh. And so we, I would have to be the interpreter. Right. So as a child, having a medical condition and then having to interpret for your parents, <laughs> it's very, it's it a lot. Um, right. Because you're hearing all these things from the doctor that you don't even know what it is and you have to tell that to your parent right. who's very anxious about what's happening with you and right. what's going on. So I would say it was definitely a traumatizing experience. Um, and you know, there's laws now where you know your child should not be interpreting for you when you go to the doctor mm, right. because my mom would give a lot of information and I would be like, that's not important. I'm not going to tell that to the doctor because that's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> um, and so I wouldn't mm. tell all the information both ways. Right. Like the doctor would right. also say stuff, and I'm like, oh, my mom doesn't need to know all those details. Right, right, right. Um, so it was, it was kind of. And it's not your job. It's not your job. Right, and it, it's not a child should not be the one in charge of giving this information <laughs> to their parents about their own medical conditions right, or like the right, doctor right, asking right. like, oh. Um, you know, are you interested in this? And I would be like, no, I'm not. So then I wouldn't tell my mom. I'd be like, oh, no, that's not what the doctor said. Right. They said, you know, so th that's definitely not right. the right way to go. Um, for a while, I did not have health insurance because I wasn't documented. Um, so it was pretty much like on my own trying to like not get sick. Um, that's pretty scary. Yeah, so, so it definitely is. Um, eventually, I did get on Medicaid. Um, and so that changed a lot for the first time I had access to healthcare and I really I feel like still didn't know how to react to it like oh you mean I can go anytime and I don't have to take a whole day off right. and like you're actually going to listen to what I have to say um so I think it definitely kind of marked me I have sort of a flip story in that my parents took a lot of ownership in the process of going to the doctor and like I would just be there kind of letting them handle it and so when I first moved to the U.S. and I had to be kind of in charge of my own and I had to sort of deal with my own diagnosis and everything, I would flip because I would know what to say. <laughs> they would ask me like, oh, what's your diagnosis? And I knew that I had like, to... Let me call my mom and find right, out. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and so I think that it's really... What I learned is like how important it is for... Especially people with disabilities that have severe... Or not severe, but several... Um, different medical conditions to take ownership of their 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 conditions and sort of be able to express them because I definitely wasn't and I would be I would I would do things like I have to call my mom I have to figure <laughs> this out um and it was scary it was intimidating it was something that I think my parents were trying to protect me or my they didn't feel the need for me to take ownership on that and so I didn't uh, and so now uh, I've learned to, to be my own advocate and to ask for what I need. And that's the thing, if you don't say what you need, there's a lot of people that need services in schools or might need a wheelchair or might need X, Y, Z. And if they don't advocate, especially as young adults, if we don't advocate for what we need, nobody's gonna advocate on our behalf. And so learning that process, I think is really important. Yeah, definitely. When I talk about disability and work with different disability groups, the hardest ones to work with are professionals in the medical field right. because they look at disability in such a medical model that they they just think, oh, you have a disability, you need to be fixed. 
Right. Um, you have a disability, what can we do to make you not so disabled? Right. Um, and so it's very traumatizing because you're so empowered and then you go to the doctor and they're just like, we're so sorry, you right. can't see or you can't walk. Or So I think there definitely needs to be a shift in the training of medical professionals and how they view disability. I want to be able to go to the doctor and I'm have not. and have somebody be like, oh, that's great that you're doing well. Um, you know, we have this checkup we can do instead of like, oh, I'm so sorry, how right. long have you been blind? So there can be that connection where you have a positive view of disability and are still in the medical right. field. And also, I think knowledgeable about what it is that you need and what it is that mm -hmm you need to develop as a as a young adult. I think there's a lot of instances when doctors might think like you're not having sex or you're mm -hmm. not uh, or you're not uh, developing, you know, social skills the right way or right. there's this misconception. Or like they assume like, oh you have a job? You're not just at right. home? Like I've right, had people right, be right. like, Oh, you have a job? Right. Oh, right. you're you know, coming in asking right. these questions but I don't understand how that has to do with your right. life. Right, 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 right. Exactly. So more more training on like how can, you can be a person with a disability that still needs this medical attention, mm -hmm. but can also self-identify and be empowered by their own disability, which is often this contradiction that I don't think it's well talked about. Yeah. And finally, I think it's really important for us to mention um, the the new healthcare bill that's been uh, proposed and how mm -hmm. that will affect. Uh, especially people with pre-existing conditions. So I think when we talk about the new health care bill, we talk about pre-existing conditions and we only talk about children and elderly. And we're leaving out of the conversation people with disabilities. So we are pre-existing conditions. We're right. walking around being pre-existing conditions. Right. And so when our voices are not part of the conversation, that's problematic. And I think more than ever, it's really important for people that might not identify as disabled, mm -hmm. but may have dyslexia or depression or other type of invisible disability to come together in solidarity and say we are pre-existing condition because we are going to be stronger together than if we are divided so i hope this video is an encouragement um, with our stories to say you're not alone in this you know if you struggle with an invisible disabilities um we've been there and you know let's stand together and show that our lives as pre-existing conditions as living and breathing pre-existing conditions are just as valuable as anyone else's and it's not it's not an option i mean for me not having insurance is not an option i need to have insurance because mm -hmm. you're just at more risk of having you know of needing certain medical procedures and that's okay that's part of life and part of diversity and that's part of the value that we bring to society so with that i think uh you know, we encourage you to, to speak to your congressman or to your representatives uh, about the importance of affordable and uh, well-established medical coverage. And we'll leave it there for next week. See you guys.